In this video, I'm going to give you five essential tips that come from my experience and will definitely improve the way you model and the quality of your models. Let's go. Look, modeling is important, I know, but so is everything else in the design process. In our free Hard Surface Jumpstart course, you will not only feel more comfortable with hard surface modeling, but also confident with rendering and excited about your new game-changing portfolio. Link is in the video description. Let's get started. Tip number one, block out mid tertiary. This is really important. You need to first start with a solid block out. Now, there are a few reasons for this, okay? First reason is because you need to find where you're going. Okay, you need to find the shape, the balance, the, the distribution of the major blocks and the overall silhouette of your design. Okay, let's say if you were making a mech, then you know you need to know where to place legs, how to place them, how big is the torso, do you need arms, do you need just guns? Do you know what I mean? Like you need to know where things go. Once you get that done, then it's time to refine them. Okay, just like a sculptor refines a sculpt. So then you add mid details and you create, you know, more refined shape, more decisive cuts, etc. And then once you get that done, you go with tertiary detail, which is really fine detail, decals, you know, etc. Okay. Now the reason why this is so important to follow this flow is because if you want to change anything substantial in your design at any stage, then if you have a solid block out, you don't really have to go back that far. Do you see what I mean? Because you may model something emotionally and then you eventually at the end will think that oh shit this doesn't really look that good and you wanted to make some changes and you can't because you have so many details you spend so much time refining a specific piece that you just you know you, you don't want to go back and you kind of go with it and you kind of feel back in the back of your head the design isn't super cool but you just don't want to you know give up on all that work that's bullshit don't do that okay so even if you invested a lot of time go ahead and you know destroy it start over because quality of your work is everything satisfaction from your work is everything and time invested in doing that is going to only benefit you in the long run because next time you're not gonna make that mistake or it's very unlikely so if you make a mistake like that go ahead and fix it that's the most important thing don't be lazy Second thing is bevels and chamfers. Guys, planar shifts, they're really important. Whenever there is a planar shift, meaning there is a difference in an angle between two planes that meet, there's either a bevel or a chamfer, right? Or basically there is a breakage, so the plane shifts and bends. These gonna create beautiful highlights. So without details, any details, you can create a really intricate shape only by using planar shifts, and that's an art on its own. But when you're adding chamfers and bevels, make sure that you're going to add different sizes and width. It's really important, right? So it creates kind of like a dance of planar shifts, if you know what I mean. And that comes with experience. But, you know, don't create all chamfers or all bevels of the same size because it's just not going to make any sense. It's going to look dull, okay? You need to be dynamic with your form, right? Bevels and chamfers also need to follow another thing we're going to be talking about in a minute, and that's scale. You need to scale your bevels accordingly to whatever you're making so if you're making a small for example like an iphone you cannot make two big bevels because it's just gonna look freaking weird right you need to adjust the size of a bevel to whatever you are making so the correct scale next problem is shading when you're working on something and you see a problem fix it if it's not major then go for it and, you know keep working but if it's major and you know it's gonna break things in the future and that again comes with experience go ahead and fix it because you're gonna be crying later on you're gonna have more work to do and it's gonna be more annoying so when i model usually what i do i go non-destructive until i know that i like the shape i apply everything all the modifiers you know all the booleans and then i fix if i have to fix something and i move on right and this is a workflow that works for me what works for you i don't know but i'm just saying you know watch the shading because if you neglect it you might end up with the bullions breaking your geometry faces disappearing and all that okay so you know clean it on the go yeah also remember to add weighted normal modifier because that will hold your shading when you work with bullions and bevels and remember to keep it at the bottom of your stock and never apply that thing even if you export it from blender do not apply that thing it's gonna get applied automatically okay topology now correct topology for me doesn't mean quads that's bullshit okay correct topology is the topology that follows the purpose so if you need quads use quads if you need angles you know use angles i don't care what you're using just make sure that fits whatever you're making 
So for example, if you're making a static object that doesn't bend, doesn't animate, it's not going to be used in VFX, in videos or games, then who gives a shit? Use Angons. If you really need to do something organic and it needs to be something that curves, bends, animates, whatever, well, logic, right? Use quads. So you need to use topology that fits the purpose. If, and if someone tells you that you need quads and only quads, they slap them out of the misery because they're full of shit. Now, topology is important when you're working with bevels and chamfers and booleans because when you combine all these you may end up with overshooting topology when for example bevel is too big or for instance you know the two bevels overshooting and you're gonna cut through it with a boolean and you're gonna have a bad day so you need to think when you design and think when you cut something okay what tools you need to use and that again comes with experience and if you're gonna keep watching our tutorials on youtube or our courses or join our discord or community you will learn really fast okay and the last thing is scale i see it a lot okay now i made this mistake myself right again comes with experience so don't worry now scale and proportion is super important so when you're for example making something that humans gonna be using We'll grab a free human you know from cgtrader.com or wherever and put it in your scene and just see if that actually works so whenever i model something that could be used by humans or is kind of referable to us you know so you can refer to it in real life like a truck gun i don't know um you know a ship um or for example some kind of uh, you know doorway you know, like a building i always use human references because sometimes it's difficult to eyeball this okay when you use a human reference you're gonna be spot on and let me tell you our eyes are really difficult to deceive because we see these things every day you see entrances every day cars every day bikes you know what you know telephones you know maybe not guns unless you're in the states in texas but you know you can imagine how big is it because you watch movies so what i'm saying is that when you create something that is gonna be used by humans or you can kind of sense the scale in real life make sure it follows it because otherwise it's just gonna look weird and that goes to details as well because details have to follow the size of what you're making so if you're making a truck for example or a spaceship and it's big right then for example hatch for like a smaller vessels to land or like you know some kind of a landing um like a landing bay or cargo bay or landing gear whatever it needs to follow the scale now don't expect to get all these things right at the first time it's gonna take some time maybe years i don't know but it's all down to practice okay so you're gonna get better and better and better the trick is to stay on the truck if you're gonna continue doing it every day you will get better because that's basically how it works right so if you're going to see a slowdown in your progression that's also natural because the first 20 or 24 hours whenever you learn something new it's usually very explosive because you learn very quickly since it's a new knowledge but then it's gonna slow down gradually just like you go to a gym and you work out you know first three months you're gonna see a bulk up face and then you're gonna be like stagnant you're gonna say shit this doesn't work it works but it's slower and the same thing with everything in your life the deeper you go into a subject the slower it's gonna get but the farther you go better you're gonna get and the more unique you're gonna be okay because not many people will go that far usually they give up okay so don't give up keep walking and you're gonna be good thanks for watching all the best to you guys